Harry and Meghan have sworn for their delusions. What a crazy illusion reality must be. Tells you all about the great American delusion of Harry and Meghan thinking the Bidens would let them take a ride on Air Force One hello in a warm welcome to the royal family's news YouTube channel. Those of you who follow U.S. politics are likely familiar with Joe Biden's decades-old habit of scattering classified documents on the East Coast. But it can be said that his administration managed to keep at least one of the world's secrets for almost an entire year, the Daily Mail exclusively reported last weekend that Harry and Meghan made a very bizarre request to the White House after attending the Queen Elizabeth Lake funeral. The offers were therefore in London to express their condolences and what better time to network. And Harry, the two asked Joe and the First Lady if they could hitch a ride on Air Force One to take them home from the good old U. Oh yeah, Harry and Meghan had been kicked out of a reception at the Buckingham Palace and there were even reports that some people in the crowd were booing them and that they were still public enemy number one in their home country. After that he recounts the whole Oprah interview where they accused the royal family of being racist and also all sorts of other awful things, intend to ignore a near-suicidal pregnancy. Meghan was among the claims, but they still thought everyone had forgotten about her. I mean, who were they kidding? Even the Biden White House was smart enough to dodge that bullet. According to sources, the White House immediately responded to their request and told them absolutely not, it was a quote. No starter. Now, if the president's staff put him in this position, then they deserve to be fired on the spot. What a ridiculous request, as if the president doesn't have more important things to work on, like America's relationship with its closest ally. For example, a source told the DailyMail.com that it would cause such a stir, this would have strained relations with the palace and the new king. Yes, that's an understatement. Just three months later, of course, Netflix aired its lame piece of propaganda titled Harry and Make, the supposed six-part documentary series that portrayed the royal family as collaborators in this old-fashioned racist system. And then a month later, Harry stalked just about every member of his family. Again, when her backup mother came out, so it's no wonder the White House didn't want to get involved with those two and the fact that Meghan and Harry for all their politically well-paid advisors, one who worked for Hillary Clinton and then another who worked for Michelle Obama didn't understand, T was a terrible idea. Seriously tells us everything there is to know about them. What were they thinking? I mean, how delusional are they? It's not that Air Force One is a private jet the property of American taxpayers and that's a big deal. In fact, some of the most significant moments in our country's history happened on the plane carrying the President of the United States. On September 11, for example, President Bush was airdropped from Air Force One to begin coordinating the nation's response to that horrific terrorist attack. And then, after President JFK was assassinated, his successor, Lyndon Johnson, was sworn in as president with Jackie Kennedy by his side on Air Force One. So basically you're not asking to get on the president's plane, I mean, who would ask such a ridiculous question if you're invited, you feel so lucky. Being a passenger is quite a privilege and few people get this privilege, it is usually reserved for elected officials or diplomats and of course the first family. Now sometimes in a show of national pride and respect. A person's coffin could be transported, but this is also a very rare case and patients are often sent by any means to Harry and Meghan. Of course, here are the peanuts for the flight, have fun. Did they really think the White House was as dumb as Oprah's interview made so clear? The two had no problem spilling all the dirt in private conversations when putting money in their pockets. And Meghan's political aspirations are no secret either. So, when the eight-hour flight with America's most powerful man will be a handy springboard for his next career move, T would have been wonderful to stick a big old photo of Meghan and Harry in the airplane ladder waving Bidens on a campaign poster. It was clearly selfish and what exactly did they have to offer the Bidens? Well as far as I can see, absolutely nothing as usual. That explains a lot, doesn't it? It seemed like Harry and Meghan were convinced the world owed them something that if only people could see how talented, brilliant and abused they were, then the crowds would back down and parade them through the streets, and I have to admit, it seemed to work for them for a while.
at least Spotify and Netflix signed them for $2 million and $1 billion. And then everyone quickly realized what was going on and said they were cheered and hugged for stabbing their family just to make money. Most people gave them up once the mainstream media ran favorable stories about them. But now they are relentlessly criticized and polls show that public opinion towards them on both sides of the Atlantic has indeed descended south. There was also some very interesting information in this new report. The next day, I spilled the fuse on Oprah. Apparently Meghan thought she had gained an ally in Joe Biden. Now the first lady had worn an Oscar tailor while renting a dress with a lemon motif at a State Department event. And that dress looked like something Meghan wore a month earlier, and according to Twitter, it was a subtle nod of support, and Meghan may have believed it too. He would have sent the first lady a basket of lemons to express it. Thanks. Oh yeah Meghan, so subtle, so low-key because I guess it's their little secret that they share all the headlines of all the missteps of all the scandals that Meghan and Harry have been involved in over the last few years. It's maybe my favorite because it's a perfect example of everything that's wrong with them, their plan to attack the royal family and flee to America to become rich and famous never made sense because it was incredibly irrational. And apparently rationality has never been their forte. They still believe that reality is just an obstacle that they have to overcome. Another thing is that they can call a truce. All they want from the royal family is too smart to fall for such nonsense, and between Queen Camilla and Princess Anne, Prince William, neither Meghan nor Harry will ever come close to the king. Her Majesty has also made it clear that Meghan and Harry are no longer welcome. At the palace, we're not asked to lower our collars until Meghan can lie. And they claim that they had decided not to come. The royal family would also know all about Meghan and Harry and would know that Meghan in particular would be desperate for anything they could record and sell to Netflix so it wouldn't do anything for them either way, it's kind of like they're ghosts at Jubilee and kept apart from the real working royals. And I think Meghan Markle is too scared to go back to the UK because she can't stand being booed and that's exactly what to expect. No matter where she went, keep using the same old excuse. Oh so. And so he doesn't want me there because they're afraid I'll overshadow them for some reason no one can see and you, what do you think of the crazy behavior of this couple? Please share your views with me and we can discuss that as well. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and family who need it if you prefer it today and also subscribe to the Royal Family News Channel for more videos of our team. Thank you goodbye and we will come back to see you in the next.